Hi, here's a video about a little tray that catches chips. Recently I bought a mini lathe from eBay, a seller called Best of Plus. Before following the recommendations of Tim Nummy's excellent channel, links are in the description, I thought I'd give it a go and turn down a piece of aluminium bar I made some years ago uh, from scrap metal I found on the bins. As you can see a tailstock there must be running out, hence the regular pattern on the blue marking. It's been 15 years since I last had a metal turning lathe and now I remember what I hate about it. It's all the swarf and the chips. As you can see, the tool digs into the metal and rips out those pieces and then dumps them everywhere, mostly down on the ways where you don't want them. Also worse, on the lead screw. Once chips get onto the ways, they've got nowhere to go really apart from underneath the carriage, which is not good. So I want something to protect the ways from the chips, guide them down the back or down the middle hole, and also to protect the lead screw. To design the part that I felt like having, I downloaded FreeCAD, which is absolutely awesome. You can just sketch up stuff in the part design workbench, add your dimensions, click pad, and boom! There it is. It's only on screen for now, but there it is. Once I'd made the tray, I just made out a little sketch for the back part, which will sit on the carriage. Added the dimensions, click pad, and there it is. Of course it needs some holes, so another sketch, some more dimensions. Click uh, pocket, and there it is, there's the holes. I thought it needed some kind of end piece around that part, just to stop the chips jumping back over the edge. So again, another sketch, another pad, and that's that part done. Uh, poof, what's next? Hmm, it's a bit of a gap. Just there. So, again, another little sketch. There's the sketch. Click again on pad, and, well, easy as that, that little piece is now just filled in. I actually printed this part as as is, uh, but then later I thought, hmm, it'd be nice to fill in that small hole there. So uh, I could have modified the original end piece, but instead I'm a bit idle, just did another sketch, clicked pad again, and <laughs> that's it, the whole thing is done. To 3D print this part, just select all the pieces that are relevant, click export, choose the STL file type, give it a name, click OK, that's the file created. Now off to the next piece of software which is called Cura. I found it best to rotate the part in Cura so that the end piece, the uh, piece that ended up being vertical, sits to the bottom. Send it to the printer. A few hours later, there it is. On the carriage, there are two holes. One appears to go all the way through, and the other one is used for another kind of fastener. But at least the middle one we can use to fasten down our part. So just put the part in place. Whoops. Um, and then to hold it in place, all you have to do is put in a bolt and tighten up a nut on the bottom and that's it, it's done. Now you can see as the machine runs, the chips come trundling out, going everywhere like they always do. But at least this time they're not on the ways, they're sat on that tray. A simple matter to push them down into the hole in the middle and even the vibration machine will probably achieve much of the same thing. The length of the part is approximately 78mm if I remember rightly, uh, which means that this end wing here, if you uh, look, there it is, uh, stops actually on the fuse holder, and by this point the tool post is dangerously close to the chuck anyway, so pretty much uh, as close as we're going to get. Thanks for watching!